Right then, hello and welcome to Toka Touring Car Championship or Toka Championship Racing in North America. It's been 23 years since this game was released and since then we've had the likes of Toka 2 Touring Cars, Toka Race Driver, uh, Race Driver Grid, we've had so many games released and excluding this one only two others have the British Touring Car Championship in them, uh, which was Toka 2 Touring Cars obviously and the first Toka Race driver. That was until recently because apparently recently announced is that there's going to be a new British Touring Car Championship game released sometime in 2021 by Codemasters, so I will be keeping an ear to the ground for that one. And uh, yeah, we'll hopefully be getting another BTCC title coming out soon, which would be absolutely awesome. Right then, now I did put down a, uh, a poll recently uh, regarding what manufacturer to choose. And uh, you did vote in your droves, and I've written down all the votes that had happened, and calculated them and added them up, so we'll go through that shortly. Uh, we're going to do a championship, and we're going to do a full championship, a new game please, thank you very much. Unlike the American version, there is no difficulty setting. You can have either easy, medium, or hard. Nope, there's no difficulty setting at all on this one at all. Uh, instead, the difficulty increases as you progress through the championship. And boy, does it increase massively. The first two rounds of the championship at Donington Park are very trivial. You could lap the entire field probably twice. Um, yeah, so... Uh, it's 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 gonna be a wild ride. Let's put it that way. Uh, we're just gonna put the first name in. Why not? Because why not? Right then, and here we go. We have on offer Honda, Audi, Vauxhall, Volvo, Ford, Nissan, uh, Peugeot, and Renault. Let's start with the lowest of the votes. And Peugeot got the lowest votes with six in total. Nissan was second with eight. Honda was third in the votes with nine in total. Ford was fourth with 10 votes. Renault only had 12 votes in total. Then you had Vauxhall with 14. And the last two, Audi was second with 15 votes, but the Volvo won with 21 votes in total. So that is, a, that is the manufacturer we're gonna choose. And we're gonna start then with the first two rounds at Donington Grand Prix. And, uh, yeah, these races, the first two, like I said, are very, very trivial, very, very easy to win, so I'm not even going to bother qualifying. Um, and then, I think it's to do with the points algorithm. Uh, the more points you get in the championship, the harder it gets, where, uh, sometimes the last round of the series... This is the 1997 Touring Car Championship. The Volvo team may be the ones to watch this season with their new driver looking to impress. Donington Park is our first venue for the opening rounds of the touring car season. Qualifying for the first race is about to start, so let's see who ends up with that elusive pole position. Ah, yes, I uh, didn't want to uh, butt into Tiff Nadell there. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, the championship gets a lot harder as you progress. Uh, the last round of the championship is pretty much impossible to win. Um, the Renaults dominate everything and yeah, it's, it gets incredibly difficult to actually keep up with the, uh, the front end of the field. Um, but like I said, the first two races are very, very easy, so we're not even going to bother qualifying. And we're just going to get on and uh, see how well we do. The new Volvo driver and he ends up with a lot to do in the race. Yep, unfortunately, we're starting all the way at the back with one of the Peugeots of Patrick Watts, Will Hoy, Paul Radicic, the usual bunch. Well, but there we go. time to go down to the track where the cars are ready to start the first race. Yep, 20 points needed at this venue. You get 15 for a win, I think. And away we go. Oh, and the camera going a little bit weird there. But yeah, 18 laps for the uh, the races here at Donington, and uh, they are they take about 25 or so minutes to actually complete. Oh, getting a bit punted out of the way there by the Nissan. It's fine. Um, now there is a gimmick with this game. Um, oh, yeah, you will find this happens quite a lot as well. Uh, the cars do have a tendency to spin because there's a lot of bumps in the track especially coming to Croft later in the season um, 
I don't think they had time to actually play test the circuit because this game, unlike the uh, the previous one or the the later titles, this this game came out halfway through the season, uh, and they did go back to Croft. It was the first time they actually went to Croft. Uh, for 1997 and uh, there's a lot of bumps there are more mountains than anything uh, to what I've come to know as the Croft curse because it is very very hard to actually get a victory there or even a top 10 um, but yeah there is a little exploit you can do with this game is that if you just tap a car before a corner they lose all manner to brake and the car just spears off the circuit It's very very strange but it does work um, in earlier versions of the game, that wasn't possible. Uh, the car is just stuck to the road, and uh, it was more of a challenge. I think this was uh, dumbed down just a little tiny bit. But yeah, the, 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 the difficulty does increase massively. And I mean massively. This is... I'm just sauntering along, just, you know, as a Sunday drive. But later on, you are going to have to knuckle down and really put in all the effort you can just to try and keep up with the Renault Lagunas, which did dominate 1997, both in real life and in this game, with Alain Menu taking the title overall. But yeah, I will be uh, looking forward to, well, if they do make a new uh, British Touring Car Championship game. One thing that I would like for them to do is, uh, oh, and again... Just the slightest of turning in the, the car spins. Um, but yeah, what I would really like them to do is to go back to their roots. You know, the proper British Touring Car Championship. The atmosphere that it has. None of this weird marquees on the side of the circuit like Red Bull tents and some weird American announcer going, and now we're just about ready for the start of the race. None of that nonsense, you know, like you've got on grid. Um, because I've, I've watched video footage of the, the new Grid game, and you got, I think is it Brands Hatch, you have uh, an actual massive fairground uh, as you go into Paddock Hill Bend. That's not really there, there's hardly any room, because before you get to the, uh, well, as you go into Paddock Hill Bend, uh, there's a tunnel that goes underneath the corner, uh, and that is a secondary paddock for... Uh, support car championship cars like the Renault Clio's that they used to have so all the support paddock is just past Paddock Hill Bend um, with the spectator stands as well um, so yeah I really hope they do make an authentic title and not just an advertising board for Red Bull or Monster or whatever other drinks company they can fathom to get the money from um, that would be really, really nice if they were able to do that, but we'll see anyway. Um, I'm surprised that they actually took time out to consider making a new title instead of uh, making an updated dirt game or or oh, whoops or grid or another Formula One game, which is basically a a reskinned version of the one previously, but. Yeah, it would be uh, it would be really nice, a nice breath of fresh air to uh, get another British touring car title out there, because a lot of people have asked for one for years. Um, and like I said, you know, uh, only two other games, excluding this one, actually had the British touring car license, which was Toka Two Touring Cars and the first Toka Race Driver. No other games had the British touring cars in there, so. You know, a lot of people, actually, I'm going to just punt him out of the way. There you go, give him a tap, and he loses his brakes. Um, but yeah, a lot, a lot of people have asked for a new title for it, um, and even making their own championships, like on Forza Motorsport and uh, Gran Turismo Sport and stuff like that, just to uh, make a bit of authenticity, I suppose. But we'll see anyway. Um, hopefully they, they do keep it old school. But I was thinking, actually, what they could do would be like a, a career orientated thing. So let's say uh, you could do. They'll have. This is what I would like to see, okay? So this is my own thoughts. They could either have multiple championship options. So you could have the normal free race where you could just set up a race in any car that you've unlocked or have available at the time in any of the championship series. 
You could do the British Touring Car Championship as one of the careers, or you could do a proper full-on career. So you start off um, in the support categories, like they do at the British Touring Car Championship events. So you could start off in, say, the Formula 4 Championship, like what Billy Monger was in, and then work your way up to the Janetta Juniors, if you so desire. And then work your way up to the Renault Clio Championship, or uh, as it will be this year when it does kick off, uh, the Mini Cooper Championship. And work your way up through the levels, and eventually go up to, say, the Janetta GT5s. And then you get your foot into the British Touring Car Championship by signing a contract with a team. And then you, it's your chance to actually keep that seat for however many seasons it is. Uh, they could also have, like, a retro mode, where you go through some of the old era, so say maybe the 70s championship, where you had, well, it wasn't called the British Touring Car Championship back then, it was the British Saloon Car Championship. So you could drive the likes of, you know, an old, I don't know, a Ford Anglia, well, that's going back to the 60s, isn't it, but, like, a Ford Anglia, or... I don't know, uh, a Rover Vitesse, and then work your way up through, say, like the Ford RS 500s. Um, something like that, you know, it would be, it would throw, you know, a different element into a career. And you could take on the likes of Andy Rouse in the Toyota Carina. Um, but yeah, that would be nice, and then you could, uh, like, unlock, maybe, if they got the licensing for... I don't know, clips of old races, you know, high definition clips of uh, some of the races of yesteryear. And then you can go through the Super Touring era from like 1991 or 92 all the way up through 2000. And then go to the uh, BTC or the uh, S2000 or whatever it was. So, you know, the possibilities are endless for them to have certain series or certain ways to include careers but I think I think well I dread uh, that they're probably just gonna go with the the same style as the new grid game a more arcadey style race game instead of more of a, a British touring car simulation cuz I was talking to um, uh, Fury the other day, and uh, we were talking about, you know, is damage important in games? See, so you got arcade racers, people like arcades, or people like simulation. And, uh, oh look, we're coming up to lap cars already, only on lap six. Yeah, th these two races are very, very easy. Get past the Mondeos, thank you very much. Uh, but yeah, I think damage is incredibly important in sim games. Come on, get out of your way. There you go. And a roundy goes just from giving him the tap. Goodbye, one of the Fords. Um, because it makes you a more careful driver. If you get games like uh, Gran Turismo Sport, for example, you don't really get a huge amount of damage. Not, you know, race-ending damage. So a lot of people are very boisterous when they go into corners. They punt people out the way. And sometimes it makes for a very horrible racing experience. Now, damage reduces that because people are more careful how they're driving. Otherwise, they get, you know, taken out of the race. A bit like iRacing sort of thing. Because um, the damage modeling on iRacing is pretty damn good. I've never played it myself. Uh, I probably never will because, one, I can't afford a subscription. And, uh, to my game would, or game, my, uh, PC would probably melt like T1000 if I tried. Um, but yeah, say you had a new touring car game with authentic damage, like real damage. So if you clank into the side of a car, um, it wrecks your suspension and you have to pull off to the side of the track to retire the car. Um... Or you get, you know, safety cars come out if a car buries itself in the gravel. That is one thing that I don't think I've ever seen in any racing game. Proper gravel traps at work. So if a car goes nose first into the gravel trap, it stays there. You aren't getting out of there without a bucket and spade anyway. 
Um, so a safety car could come out and it will increase the laps. Say you had a 24 lap race at Brands Hatch Indy, it'll increase the laps to 27 like it does in the actual series. Um, so yeah, authentic damage, authentic, you know, physics as well. Um, the possibilities are endless, literally endless, but whether they put that into practice or not is yet to be seen. Um, I hope they do, because it would be really awesome if they did, but we'll just have to wait and see for next year anyway what they can do. Um, again, I hope they do just don't make a, a another grid clone, because the physics on that one weren't, weren't great. Um... But, yeah, we'll see anyway. We'll see what happens. So, what's our... At the moment, we're just going for lap times now. So, our fastest lap was a 135.9. Oh, excuse me. Pardon me coming through. So, let's see if we can beat some lap times, shall we? We've got 11 laps to go. I think we've lapped pretty much one half of the field. Ooh. Come on, get onto the circuit. There we go. Let's have a look at the other views then. This is what our lovely Volvo looks like. It, it's not in too bad a nick. But the controls, oh yeah, very twitchy. The controls always have been twitchy on this game. Uh, one major difference, though, between the PlayStation version and the PC version is that uh, the graphics are better, obviously. Um, but you also get the driver's names on the windows. You don't have that on the PlayStation version. You just have the normal grade windscreen and windows. But I have tried to get the, play uh, the PC version working. Uh, I managed, I think, five seconds... Uh, in the start of a race and then the game would just crash so it doesn't work it is a lot more compatible on windows 10 systems but yeah unfortunately it doesn't like windows 7. Uh, we're coming up to the second half of the field so let's push him out the way shall we there you go he should lose his brakes. Oh no, he actually kept it together. Okay, good. Oh no, there we go. I just tapped him and he went in for al almost spin. Oh man, we're three seconds off exactly on our previous lap time. So we'll try again. Hey, it's our teammate. I don't know if that is Rydell or Kelvin Burt. I'm not sure. He's in car 11 anyway. We'll see. I think it's... Oh, oh, he just tapped me. I've got me a bit loose. Oops, I took off my teammate. Oh, well. Oh, no, there he is. He's fine. He's fine. Oh, we're still 1.4 seconds off our fastest lap time. I've had to turn the music down as well because... Yeah, the... the uh, uh, you do get... A lot of, uh... Ooh. Off again. Yeah, I've had to turn the music down because uh, a lot of these... Uh, I don't know what you call them. Rogue companies. They try to copyright claim uh, for the music, which doesn't even belong to them. And I've had a lot of them on uh, the Colin McRae games as well. Especially the intro to Colin McRae, uh, Colin McRae 2. Uh, there was this weird, weird-ass company, I don't know, I can't remember who it was, but they were saying, oh yeah, this was a bit of music that came out in, like, 2014 or something, when obviously that game was released in 1998. So, uh, yeah, when it comes to Codemasters games, a lot of people try to dip their hand in the pocket sort of thing and try and claim for music that isn't theirs. Is that the second time we're passing the uh, Vauxhall of Cleland? I think, yeah, because yeah, we're passing the Fords again. Bloody hell. So that must mean, then, that the Renault Lagunas have already lapped these guys as well. There's a Spitfire on the infield. 
Old Starkey's Bridge. Oh, we're almost even with the lap times. Peugeot getting in the way, thanks for that. But yeah, this is absolutely child's play for the first two rounds. This is what the second round is going to be as well. Uh, it starts to get harder. Um, oh, 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 what happened there? Yeah, even though using the analog sticks, the controls are still incredibly twitchy. So, yeah, good luck trying to uh, keep the car on the track going around certain corners. But, um, yeah, I, I really don't know what it is that causes the AI to increase their difficulty as they do. It's, it's like a huge, sharp spike from rounds one and two to rounds three and four at Silverstone. I think it might just be to do with the points algorithm. So you get, say, a max score here, and then you go to Silverstone, and then the AI are like, okay, time to uh, kick it up a gear and... Just kick our ass well and truly. Back past the AD. Cleanly this time. Oh, got, and again, the twitchy controls. Bloody hell. Oh, we're up by point 0.1. Can we beat our lap time this time? Let's see. Hopefully no one gets in the way. Uh, we've got lap cars coming up. Get through Redgate, clean, no. Ugh. No, that's not Redgate, is it? That's McLean's. Redgate is turn one. Then Coppice. Then the main straight. Hey, it's the Lagunas. Who's leading who? I reckon Menu's gonna be leading. Because Plato was always the bridesmaid when it came to 1997. In his debut season as well, so he's been in the BTCC for 20 odd years. Well, it did take a few years out, didn't he, to uh, do something else. Um, Matt Neal's been in it for a very long time. He was in it from, like, the... Was he in it from 1989 or 1990? One of them. So he's been in it for 30-odd years. Or Matthew Neal, as Murray Walker used to say back then. Oh my god, the Peugeot overtook a Honda. What is this madness? No, we haven't beat the lap time again. Oh well. Lap 12 of 18. It's actually going a bit faster than I thought it would have done. Oh, and again. Ah, oh, it's, it's so weird. Because I'm used to how twitchy this game is. So you try and put in, you know, a little tiny bit of turning ability or circle or whatever the hell you want to call it. And uh, the game sometimes doesn't respond. And yet you put in a little bit too much, and the car just spins. So you try to be careful, and it ends up biting you in the ass. And we're five seconds down on our previous fastest lap time. Stay off the grass. Yeah, the best thing to do is just let off the throttle. Come on, why are you braking so hard? Oh yeah, it's the first round of the season. One thing you can't do, you can't look back on the front of your car. It only goes to the rear boot lid. So you're stuck either on, you know, the bonnet or looking at the ass end of your car. Which, to be honest, I do like the Volvo S40. It does look very cool. Let's go back in car. So we've lapped everyone now apart from Alan Menu in the lead. Which will probably happen soon enough. Lap 13 of 18. Oh, we did gain a little bit of time, we were only four seconds off. Oh, and again, twitchy controls. Oh. Come on, man, get it together. Oh, 
Oh, so careful. Oh, we're dying by point one. Now, uh, as you progress through the championship as well, if you get enough victories, there's four quarters in this... Oh. Four quarters in the championship. Uh, 26 races in all. And uh, yeah, after each quarter, however many victories you, you uh, gain, uh, you get given cheat codes that you can try out. Uh, you got the usual where you have frogs raining instead of, you know, rain. You got disco fog. Uh, you got Banksy collisions and stuff like that. And there is Alan Menu, I think, in car number two. Oh, he, yeah, that was another thing as well. They flash their headlights at you. But you don't really notice it because there's not a um, rear view mirror that you can see any of the cars. But yeah, that is one little touch that you. That rarely gets noticed. So especially uh, later on, if you get lapped, if you're unlucky enough to get lapped. Oh, <laughs> there goes Cleland off into the boonies. Um, yeah, they, the AI will flash their headlights at you, which is a nice little touch. I do notice it a lot more on Toka 2. Oh, we did beat the lap time, not by much, only by three quarters of a second. Uh, but yeah, you do notice it on Toka 2 because you do actually have working mirrors on that game. Let's see if we can get through the old hairpin clean this time. Almost all oh, drift it. Right, up by point 2. Was oh, that the other Renault? Oh, so we've lapped everyone. Oh no, that is one of the Nissans, isn't it? All the cars look very similar, apart from the Peugeots, when you get a certain distance, because it's just a, a, a group of pixels on the screen, so you can't really see what the hell is going on. But yeah, there's the, there's the rest of them. Again, I think we're... Oh, no, no, we were up by 1.5 seconds, God damn it. Oh, oh well. I think we're actually coming up to lap the Fords and the Peugeots again for the third time. There was another thing as well that was uh, in this game, which I really don't know why, because it was never added into the others, was a horn. Yeah, you have a horn for some unknown reason. Let's kill the cones. Something I haven't done for a very long time. Yep, so these are a little gaggle of cars that we're going to be lapping. Number three. There's my teammate again. Come on, get out of the way. Oh. Try taking me out then as well. Only got a handful of laps to go, so... Oh. Now we're down by 2.0 Oh, God damn it. It is so easy to do that. You may have to wait 10 years for your driver to actually uh, put the bloody thing into gear. Uh, he's cracked our win uh, back window. It's absolutely fine. Under the uh, infamous Dunlop Bridge that they took away for safety reasons when they were reconfiguring the Donington circuit, trying to get a Formula One race here. And then they decided to remove it along with Starkey's Bridge on safety grounds. Get out of the way! Bloody hell. The Ford Mondeos were... Man, you're breaking like 10 years before the corner. Go on, sod off. Um, the Ford Mondeos were really, really naff. They were actually about on par with the Peugeots, with how slow they were. Um, unless it was raining. At the event at Silverstone, it was pouring down with rain. And the Ford Mondeos were absolutely phenomenal with Craig Baird and uh, Will Hoy. Um, but yeah, in dry conditions, they absolutely sucked. Which is a shame.
Oh, this bloody corner every single time. It doesn't matter if you're using analog controls or digital. The car always loses it around the old hairpin. I did take a few days off. Um, nothing bad happened or anything like that. Uh, I was just re uh, moving around me room pretty much. Uh, moving the recording equipment and everything to a more suitable location. Because uh, my room is absolutely tiny. And the problem was that my racing seat was facing away from any walls. So every time I'd sit my fat ass down there, it would get further and further away from the desk. Um, so I've had to move it into the very corner, against the wall, um, so that when I sit my ass down, the, the seat stays where it is, which is awesome. So that was the reason why I've been away for a few days. It wasn't anything happened, just a bit of spring cleaning, really, getting rid of some junk and moving everything around. Right, two laps to go. We were nine seconds down. Come on, let's see if we can actually get a, a sub 135. That is my dream for this race. Get out the way, teammate. Get out the way, uh, Derek Warwick. See if we can get through the old hairpin clean. Almost losing it. 0.6 down. Through McLean's and Coppice Clean, that'll be nice, yeah. Now, what we like on lap times here, the next split, point eight up. Oh, that was a bit of an ass about face way of getting through the chicane, but it works. corner and I think we're gonna do it oh we're gonna do it by a long shot 1.29 so we've got a 133 and it's the final lap as well we're gonna roar home to a victory by I think over a lap from the Renault Lagunas so I reckon then the top three is gonna be myself winning uh, Alan Menu is going to be in second, and Jason Plato is going to be in third place. Oh, we're, my word, we're up by 0.1, or 1.16 a second. Oh. There's Cleland again. Hi, Cleland. Get out of the way. I don't know what the hell he was doing there, but... Oh well, it worked. Stay off the grass. Oh my god, the control. I cannot say enough how twitchy the controls are. Either using just a D-pad or the analog sticks. It is unbelievably twitchy and we've actually lost well over a second. So I don't think we're going to beat our lap time. Even though we're only down by 0.04. Oh well. We're just going to do an exploit then. We're going to go through the pits and win the race. Even though the pits don't work, we're going to get the fastest lap time. Well, there you go. The new Volvo driver has proved that he can compete with the best with the first victory of his career. Now, Indeed. Yep, so I was absolutely correct then. So I was first, Alan Menu was second, and Jason Plato, Thompson, Bieler, Tarquini, Kelvin Burt, uh, so it was Kelvin Burt in the uh, other Volvo, Binkcliffe, and the rest of the guys were seven minutes back, by the looks of it. So, uh, yeah, race one results then. 
So, uh, yeah, I will leave it here for now, and we'll be back with race two, which is going to be a carbon copy of this one. We're going to win hands down by multiple laps. And, uh, yeah, unbelievably, John Cleland was last. And he was beaten by the Peugeots and the Fords, would you believe? Both the Vauxhalls, actually, were beaten by a Peugeot in some way, shape, or form. The second session is due to begin any time now. So, let's see who comes away with pole this time. Nope, we're not going to worry about that. So, as I mentioned, I'm going to leave it here for now. So, uh, yeah. We're back, and we're back with some good old Tocker. So, uh, yeah, I will see you next time then for round two at, once again, Donington GP. And, uh, yeah, I will see you then. Thanks for watching, take care, and stay safe.